I probably should have made a long time ago, but uh, now we are here. So my top 10 modifications for the 350Z. So I'm going to do what my top five would be are the first five on this list. And then number six would be the honorable mention if I had done it that way. And then I'll fill it out for a top 10 with an honorable mention. So you're going to get 11 different things that I think you should do to your 350Z when you're early on in the modifications. These aren't necessarily specific to any one type of person. This is more of a generalized street car is how I'm approaching this. Oh, as a side note, check out this shirt. It's got my car on it. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a way to sell those right now, but if you guys want them and enough of you say things, I might do a group buy in the future, so you can put that down below. Uh, so, number one for me is an exhaust. And I'm gonna say, really specifically, either a dual exhaust with an X-pipe in the middle, or a single exhaust all the way back that then splits out into a dual. The true dual all the way back with them completely separate sounds horrible. That's where all the trombone noises sound like from those HKS eBay copies. I had one, it was horrible. Threw an X-pipe on it, made it much better. It's not gonna get you any sort of benefit from the standpoint of performance. It's gonna make the car a little bit lighter and it's gonna make the car maybe a tiny bit more power, but the big thing is the car's just too quiet for stock for me. So making it just a little bit louder, I think will go a long way to making it a much more enjoyable driving experience. Number two, I would say is lowering the car. So you can do this multiple different ways. I say lowering springs are the best for a street driven car and you just want a little bit of extra looks. It just makes it look like a much more sporty car than it is. I think it makes it look much more modern, but at the same time, it's only a couple hundred bucks and it doesn't take very long to install. And of course, if you want to be a little bit more serious with it, you can do coilovers. But again, I think lowering springs for a street car are going to be exactly what you need. For number three, I'm going to go with sway bars. Now, this one is one where you've got a little bit of leniency on which way you want to do it. The Z does understeer from the factory a little bit, but you can tweak a lot of that out by making your front wheels a little bit wider. Get a little bit more tire up front and you can also change your alignment so instead of having it towed in so much you can do a neutral tow but sway bars can really change the balance of the car so because it's a rear wheel drive car normally you'd want a bigger front sway bar to kind of dial out some of that oversteer but at the same time because it understeers or whatever you want you might want to change the rear bar as well so you can change both of them you can change the front you can change the rear it depends on what you're trying to adjust on the suspension balance and the nice thing about sway bars is they really don't have any drawbacks or downsides other than the cost and time of installing them. They don't really have any negative impacts on how comfortable the car is to drive around. But as soon as you start to go into a turn, it is going to decrease that body roll and help keep the car doing what you want it to do. Whereas if you go with stiffer springs and shocks, yes, it's going to accomplish that same thing in a little bit of a different way. But it's also going to give you a harsher ride. So sway bars are a nice way to increase the handling of the car with really no drawbacks and of course you can dial in the car to be more specifically what you want it to be. Number four is going to be a set of test pipes. The reason I'm doing these is A, they take a good bit of weight off towards the front half of the car and it's a front heavy car anyway so you're going to take 10-15 pounds off the front of a car. They also are going to free up a decent amount of power because by now A, the cats in these 350Zs are 20 years old so they're starting to get clogged even if they weren't a performance detriment before which they kind of were now they are definitely going to be problematic. So getting those out of there is going to go a long way. Of course, the people are stealing catalysts all the time now, so you could sell those for a pretty good chunk and recoup a lot of your costs. And really, I think instead of eBay, test pipes is going to be your best bet. They're going to be about 100 bucks. It's really hard to mess those up. As long as they're stainless steel and you get a good set of hardware to install them, I think you'll be fine. Just do not use the horrible little perforated gaskets they come with. Just get a set of factory Nissan gaskets and you'll be fine. Now for number five, this is going with the test pipes and kind of with the exhaust, but a tune from UpRev is going to make a huge difference to this engine. Not because you're gonna get a bunch of power out of it. You're only gonna get probably five horsepower out of the tune, maybe 10 if you're lucky, but it's going to A, get rid of that check engine light from your test pipes. It's going to help the car work a little bit better with all of your other modifications combined. So obviously, do all of your modifications and then get the tune. But raising your rev line is going to be nice. It's going to give you more room in each gear to play with. It's going to make the engine a little bit more lively. And you can switch between five different tunes on your up rev as long as you have cruise control. I only filled three maps because I couldn't really think of anything else to do. And your honorary mention, which I'm sure you guys, a lot of you are waiting for this, and that is going to be a plenum spacer. The nice thing about the plenum spacer is 
it really does a lot to help the non-rev up DEs. The reason I have this as an honorable mention for the top five or number six for the top 10, however you want to look at it, is it's only the non-rev up DEs that really benefit from it. The rev up DEs, you can kind of back and forth. Some people say they do, some people just say they don't. It's cheap, they're super easy to install. I had a Blox plenum spacer on for a long time. It was a hundred bucks, is made out of a nice dense plastic. And what I was doing was isolating the heat from the lower plenum and the upper plenum while also working as a plenum spacer. So it killed two birds with one stone. There's a lot of different options out there and you really can't go wrong with any of them. So that's a great one, especially if you want to add it in before you get your tune. After this, it's no specific order. It's more of what you want to do or what your needs are. So for me, for number seven is going to be a set of the factory Brembo brakes. Now this one, some of you are lucky enough to have those from a factory. You don't have to worry about it. Of course, I've got my video on how to get the Brembo brakes from AutoZone for $100 a caliper if you turn in your old calipers. And then you can do the 06 to 08 rear brakes, or you can hunt down a full set of Brembos and just install those. If you're looking at a full set, it's going to be about $800, so it's a little bit steep. Plus, you have the fact that you're buying new rotors and new lines and new pads. So if you wait until you need to replace everything, you, know, you can still do it for about $1,000 of extra money on top of just having to replace your pads and rotors with the stock parts. But still, it, I think it really makes the car look a lot better having the fixed calipers. Of course, you perform a lot better. You've got a lot more mass to absorb heat. You've got a lot more surface area to dissipate heat. And you've got a lot more surface area and clamping force and consistent clamping force to slow the car down. So your pedal feel is going to be a lot better. It provides a lot of benefit with really no drawbacks other than some slight increase in weight, which can, of course, be mediated by doing two-piece rotors, which, of course, add a huge cost. But if you're tracking the car, if you're really serious about it, it's something you should definitely consider. The next two are going to be specific to people with manual transmissions, which is a lot of disease um, is going to be number eight, a lightweight flywheel. So I would do a steel flywheel or one that's a little bit more reasonably weighted, especially for a street car. If you're doing a track car or a race car or something, sure, go with the lightest aluminum one they have because you're really not going to be driving in traffic. You're going to have a little bit of struggles driving around a paddock and that's really it. It's the only time it's going to be annoying. But if you're driving on the street, you really don't like a 10 pound flywheel. You want, you want a little bit of weight. So I would go whatever the lightest aluminum flywheel is and whatever the stock weight is, I would shoot for somewhere in between that. I feel like that's a nice compromise to the way you get street drivability. You don't have it chattering all the time and you can still enjoy it while getting the benefits of having a lightweight flywheel with faster revs and the fact you can heel toe a lot easier. And then of course, the fact that you're just taking some weight off of the car. Number nine, again, gonna be specific to the manual transmissions, is going to be a short shifter. So I can kind of cheat the automatics in here and saying reversing the shifting direction so that it's pull back to go up and push forward to go down, which again, I did a video on that. Um, but for the short shifter, I've got one in my R53 Mini. I'm probably gonna put one in my E60 M5. I really like having a slightly shorter throw. I don't want ridiculously short where it's only moving like an inch or two. I feel like that makes it too risky for you to possibly money shift it and go into the wrong gear because there's not a whole lot going on there. So having a little bit of a moderately shorter shifting and a little bit more direct, so anytime you can replace like a rubber bushing with a brass bushing, something like that, will really go a long way to making the shifting experience a lot more enjoyable. And then number 10, and again, this one, it could be earlier for you, it could be later, it really just depends. The reason I picked this one up is specifically because I think it's a really good budget way of changing the wheels on your Z is getting a set of the 19 inch Rays wheels that were on the G35. Uh, they only weigh 19 to 20 pounds a corner. Uh, they're a little bit wider than the stock base wheels with two 25s in the front, two 45s in the rear. So it's a little bit of a wider wheel instead of the, I think it's 225, 235 as normal. So you get a little bit of a wider rear. They're 19s, they're really nice looking set of wheels. They're made by Rays, which of course is a legendary Japanese wheel maker. And they're very, very light and strong because they are forged aluminum. If you can get the 18 inch track wheels that came on the track model Z's, I would think those look a lot better. So those are a lot harder to find. The raised wheels are all over the place and you can pick them up for as cheap as $400 a set, no problem. 
Of course, if you're going to go into buying a set of wheels that are not, you know, used factory wheels, I'm looking at the Koenig Flowform wheels. Those are a really great option, as well as, of course, the Ever Classic RPF1 from Inky. But I think the Rays are a nice, easy way to get a better set of wheels. Of course, it's going to improve braking, handling, and acceleration. Getting rid of rotational unsprung weight is the best weight you can possibly lose. Now, last one is, this is an honorable mention. The reason I'm putting this on here is I really don't think you're going to get A, a huge benefit out of it, and B, it is going to be really obnoxious to do, and it is the 370Z manifolds. So, if you don't know, the factory manifolds on the 370Z are kind of like a quasi-tubular manifold. It's a really good factory exhaust manifold, and you can get them for nothing. They're super cheap on eBay. You can get them for the same price as a set of eBay headers, but they're going to fit much better. I mean, my eBay headers were a nightmare to install, and I really think they're not going to add any sort of extra performance over 370Z manifolds, and the 370Z manifolds are going to just drop right in. But that's the reason it's my honorable mention is I think it's a lot of work for not as much benefit as some of these other modifications. So to run through it really quickly one more time, we've got number one is exhaust, specifically single or X pipe. Number two is some lowering springs. Number three, a sway bar. Number four, a set of test pipes. Number five, an up rev tune. Number six, a plenum spacer. Number seven, a set of the factory Brembos. Number eight, an aluminum flywheel. Number nine, a short shifter or reversing the shift pattern on the automatics so it at least makes sense like it's sequential. And number 10, a set of the G35 rays and our honorable mention, a set of 370Z factory exhaust manifolds. So those are the modifications I think are your best bang for your buck, more specifically for just generally getting started or a street driven 350Z. I'd say I would budget somewhere ballpark $5,000 to get all of this done. That is a very rough number because it really depends. I mean, you could get a front sway bar for 250 bucks, you could get one for 400 bucks. You could get a cheaper flywheel, you could get a more expensive flywheel. You know, there's a lot of variation in there. I'm just giving you ballpark. I would say budget $5,000. If you got yourself a nice used Z and put all this on there for less than $10,000, you're going to have a very nice, competent, well-rounded sports car that you could do a lot with uh, without a whole lot of trouble. So, of course, if you guys have any questions or recommendations, feel free to drop those below. Hit that subscribe button, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.